I tried to do my makeup like a TikToker today and from a distance it looks fine, but up close, I just wanna let you know it looks terrible. Hey howdy, welcome back to my channel. My name is Avery Jam and today I am here with my April wrap up. Guys, I read eight books in April, which may not be good for some people, uh, but for me, that's really good. Eight books is above and beyond what I expected to finish. So I am so proud of myself. I got all of my book of the months that I was behind on read. I got, I just got so much read. So I'm so excited to share them all with you today and talk about them because I have a lot of thoughts. There was some really great books this month and some really not great books. So we've got all all kinds of bases to cover. So without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I read in the month of April was Girl A by Abigail Dean. This book is a story of a girl uh, who is referred to as Girl A because she was the oldest girl in a family of severely abused children living in a very harsh household. Uh, she was the first girl to escape from the house and kind of saved her siblings. And this book takes place in the future after all these events have gone down. She's an adult now and she has just found out that her mother has died in prison. Uh, so she goes to sort out the plans with the house that she grew up in, uh, that she was traumatized in, and the story kind of goes from there. I had very mixed feelings about this book. There were some aspects of it that I really liked and some aspects that I didn't like as much. Uh, the aspects that I really liked were the character work. I thought the characters were all great. I loved the two different timelines that you were following, the one of the past and the current timeline. I did think some of the trauma elements were a little bit downplayed. Like usually if I'm reading a book about trauma, I have to go through it really slowly, but I didn't feel like I had to really go through this one slowly because none of the trauma elements were super heavy, which I thought uh, was not necessarily the best thing. But overall, I still enjoyed it. There is a serious twist in this book that got even me. So that was definitely, that definitely earned it points in my mind. And overall, I thought it was a decent book. It definitely wasn't my favorite, but it definitely wasn't something that I hated. So I gave it three out of five stars. The next book I read in the month of April was an ebook and that was I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh and I have a lot to say about this book. This book is on paper uh, supposedly a book about a drive-by car accident where a child is hit and the car drives away afterwards. But what this book was really about was a severely, severely abusive relationship and I wish I had looked that up before reading it. I obviously, I've talked about it before on this channel, but I have serious triggers for uh, domestic violence. And so I was not prepared when I read this book. And then by the time that like, I actually realized what was, it was really about, I was halfway through the book. And so I wanted to finish it and I wanted to get it done. And I did finish it and get it done, uh, but I did sacrifice a little bit of my mental state in that process. I was just completely unprepared because the description of the book really did not give any evidence that that was what was going to happen. Uh, so I'm trying to view it objectively and not from my trauma standpoint of, you know, being terrified of this book. Overall, I did like the writing and for a thriller, it was pretty, it was pretty solid. There had some good twists in it, not any that really surprised me, but it did have some solid plot elements. Uh, I was not a fan of the cop storyline. I don't understand what it is about cops and thrillers needing to be unfaithful to their partners. Like that doesn't make any sense to me and I don't know why it's always there, but it always is and it always annoys me every single time. So that really was not my cup of tea. Uh, but overall it was good. I gave it a three out of five stars. But once again, if you have triggers for domestic violence, do not read this book, please, for the love of God. The next book I read in the month of April was my audiobook, and that was Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. Uh, this was a book about a family. It's nonfiction. It's about a family 
that lived in Colorado uh, that had 11 children, I believe, and six of them ended up being diagnosed with schizophrenia. Uh, and it was fascinating. This book, especially if you're interested in mental health and the sort of mental health world and how we got to the point where we're at today, it was absolutely fascinating. And it was interesting to see how the members of their family without schizophrenia have dealt with it and made peace with it in their lives. And overall, it was really interesting. I would recommend listening to it as an audiobook because I think it would get a little dry if I had read the actual book, but it was really fascinating. And overall, I enjoyed it and gave it four out of five stars. The next book I read in the month of April uh, was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is part of my mission to read all of the Schwab's books in the year 2021. So I finally got to this little middle grade series and this book was so fun. I haven't read middle grade uh, since I was in middle school, probably. I have not picked up a middle grade book since then because, you know, I'm very interested in adult books and adult themes and have just kind of, you know, gone with my age when it comes to reading books. So I had not picked up a middle grade in a very long time, but I thought this was so fun. It was such a quick read. The characters were absolutely amazing. The storyline was fun and filled with adventure, and I just absolutely loved it. City of Ghosts follows our main character, Cassidy Blake, whose parents are writers who write books about ghosts, and they have been picked to produce the show about ghosts in Edinburgh, Scotland. And Cassidy Blake is going with what they don't know is that Cassidy Blake can actually see and hear ghosts. She has a special talent and she has a best friend who's a ghost and they go along together into the world of ghosts, sort of learning and experiencing uh, ghostly happenings. And this book was just so fun. I loved everything about it overall made me want to pick up more middle grade. There's a couple books that I've been sort of eyeing that I'm thinking about getting and trying out um, because I really enjoyed it and I really just enjoyed the, ex the light experience of being able to read middle grade again. I thought it was really fun and I gave this book four out of five stars. Next book I read in April was another audiobook and that was The Removed by Brandon Hobson and now we are getting to the portion of the video where we get into some books that I really did not like uh, and this was unfortunately one of them. I finished this book and I really couldn't decide if I liked it or if I didn't like it. The Removed is a story that follows a family that is Native American and they uh, have lost one of their members and they're coming up on the anniversary of his death. Uh, and you're just sort of seeing where everyone at the fa in the family is kind of at. And I... And at first, when I finished it, I was like, was that meta? Was that some you know, really interesting piece of art that I just did not understand. Uh, and ultimately I decided it wasn't, it was just bad. The book is very character driven, so you're not really ever following a plot, which I do like character driven stories, but this one in particular just jumps all over the place. It has weird plot elements that don't make any sense, like they would never happen in the real world, but it's not and I mean, there is an aspect of magical realism to the book, but there was some points where I just thought it was too far. Like I was like, what is even happening right now? It was confusing. It was very meandering. I felt like it was all over the place a lot. And you never really got to a conclusion. There was never really an ending point in the book where you were like, oh yes, this is why I read this. This is why the story is being told. That never happened. And I felt like that was really lacking and there was something missing. The brother's storyline was the most interesting out of all the all of them, but it also was the one that made the least amount of sense. Like I honestly, I have absolutely no idea what was going on there or what was trying to be conveyed. And I just overall did not really like it, I, which I was really disappointed about because I was really looking forward to it. I thought it was gonna be good, but I gave it two out of five stars. The next book I read in the month of April was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, another one of my um, book of the month books. This book I loved. Uh, this book is absolutely beautiful and the insides were equally as beautiful. The Lost Apothecary follows the story of a woman named Nella who owns an apothecary uh, that also dispenses poisons to women who are looking to kill unfaithful or betraying men in their lives. 
what I thought was really interesting about this book was that it follows two storylines. I thought originally that it was just going to be the one storyline of the apothecary, but it also follows the storyline of, god what's her name, but it also follows the storyline of Caroline who is living in present day and finds a bottle from the apothecary and it goes through her kind of figuring out the mystery of the apothecary um, and also sort of what she wants to do with her life and her marriage uh, at the same time which I thought the two storylines I first I didn't think I was going to enjoy it but I actually thought it was really interesting uh, and entertaining. I really liked a lot of the parallels between the two timelines. I love when books do that where they'll have themes in one storyline that uh, mirror the themes in another storyline. So I really enjoyed that about this book and I just thought it was a really fun book. It's If you like books about women, books about the power of women and sort of, you know, women's lives, this is definitely a good one to pick up. I liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. The next book I read uh, is a doozy. We got to talk. We got to talk, guys, about The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. So first, let me tell you what it's about. The Hunting Wives is a book about a woman named, Jesus Christ, Sophie. A woman named Sophie who moves to Texas and finds herself in this group of other wives in the small Texas community that are very wealthy uh, and very mysterious. And then something happens that sort of throws the women's lives into chaos and the thriller mystery uh, storyline goes from there. I did not like this book. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the worst book I've read so far this year. The first half, I was waiting for something to happen. I was waiting for a murder. I was waiting for some intrigue and I didn't get it. All I got was drinking. I swear to God, every other sentence in this book is talking about a drink. She poured some vodka. She poured some wine. She poured some sangria. She sipped her wine cooler. She sipped her chomps. Some bullshit like that. Every other fucking line, I swear to God. And it got so annoying. I was like, I get it. They're drinking. They're drunk constantly. I get it. I'm gonna get into spoilers now because I'm so angry about this book that I literally can't talk about it without getting into spoilers. So if you want to, uh, pause the video here and go to this timestamp to continue the video spoiler free of The Hunting Wives. Before we even get halfway through to the actual intrigue and murder, we are, uh, we find out the two of the women in this group are sleeping with essentially teenage boys. Uh, children, they're 40 year old women sleeping with children, which is never a trope I'm fond of. Uh, and in this sense, it was just done really badly and disgusting and had no interest in the story whatsoever. Like I didn't, I guess it kind of tied in at the end, but not really. It seemed like we were just having sex with teenage boys because it was promiscuous and taboo and I didn't understand it at all. By the time that somebody actually gets murdered in the book, you're halfway through the book and uh, the character that gets murdered is somebody that you don't know or care about because you've only been introduced to them once in the whole book and I thought that was stupid and poorly done. I did not like this. <laughs> I gave it one out of five stars. Uh, I'm surprised I got through it. That was the one saving grace about this book is that it is very readable. Uh, like you feel like you can't put it down and like you need to finish it and like, you know, the chapters are really short so you're just kind of going through it and <laughs> that was its only saving grace because if it hadn't had that, I probably would have DNF'd this book. I hope you all are eager to read it now <laughs> but I've completely ruined it. Then after I finished that horrible book, we had a saving grace at the end of the month and that is... Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. This book is translated from uh, Spanish. It's by an Argentinian author, I believe. And it follows the story of a man who works for a meat industry, but the meat industry in this future uh, where the book is set is human meat. Uh, animals have contracted a disease that makes them inedible. Almost all of the animals are dead and humans have decided uh, that they will be harvesting other humans to eat instead. And this follows Marcos who works 
at a plant where they slaughter uh, humans. Um, Marcos is given a human stock uh, that he is, can do whatever he wants with, uh, and it kind of changes his life, and the story goes from there. This book was fantastic. The whole premise I already loved. I knew it was a premise that I liked, but the execution was just so wonderfully done. I definitely wouldn't recommend this book if you're not a person that likes gore or uh, like violence in books. The descriptions of the slaughterhouse scenes in this book were insane. They were so well done and so visceral, and I absolutely loved that about the book. Um, and I loved the ending so much. I think the ending is something that uh, makes people very divisive on the book, but I personally really loved it and thought it was so well done. And I just, I couldn't get enough of this book. It's super short. I read it in a day and I just was floored by the end of it. Uh, I gave it five out of five stars. It was absolutely a new favorite. And that's the end. Those are the eight books that I read in the month of April. I am so pleased with how much books I read this year, even though I did love some, did hate others, uh, but it was a good reading experience all around and I am so happy with what I finished. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did like it, please leave me a like. You can subscribe to the channel if you want. All of my social medias and other links are in the description below, so check those out if you're interested. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.